how to create a body of work from your passion project is our topic today on this special guest luminar coffee break and our feature guests will appear in a moment. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Now, we do have a very special guest today. She's an incredible photographer, a fine art photographer, a great educator, and her uh, talks are extremely inspirational. Please welcome Judy Host. Hello, Judy. Yep. You want to unmute your mic? Yep. Yep. One moment. Let's unmute. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we yep. can hear you. Perfect. Yep. I feel like a commercial. Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, Judy. Thanks um, so much for joining us. Um, so you're helping wrap up the entire month of August for with female educators and I can't think of a, a, a great one to uh, be the, what do you call it, the, um, the cleanup hitter in, in baseball. So, so you're, you're the, you're the uh, cleanup hitter uh, of, the, of the group itself. Oh. Oh, so glad to have you. Now, your topic today is about building a body of work on a passion project, right? So I'm gonna let you take over. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, so there's a lag in this. Does everybody see that or just me? No, but it's just on the recording, but you're fine. Okay, I'm fine. Good to know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi, everybody, and, and thanks for joining in today. My name is Judy Host. Um, I'm a portrait photographer. Um, I have been since I was about 15, uh, but professionally since I started my business in my 30s. Um, and I've been photographing children and families and babies and not weddings um, for, you know, about 25 or so years. And I never really, I'm not a dancer. Um, I've never been a dancer, never wanted to be a dancer. But I have a passion for dancers, ballet dancers specifically. And so as I was deciding it was time to rebrand and reinvent myself, I decided at that point that I was going to really just start a personal project for me, not for anybody else, just for myself. Uh, I call it a passion project because it, it is that. Um, I had no specific intention when I started it. It was just something fun to do. Uh, something that I did in my spare time, which I didn't have much of, but I needed a place to, I don't know, I, I will say visually dump uh, a lot of my energy um, and to do something really just specific for myself. And it happened to be ballet. That, gosh, I think I'm going to go back seven years, maybe even eight years ago is when it started. And I met a couple of professional dancers. Uh, I'm in Atlanta. They all dance for the Atlanta Ballet. So I had an introduction uh, to some professional dancers who really uh, let me work with them. And, and I say that because not knowing much about dance, I really needed help. And so I would photograph what I thought was really beautiful. I'd style the shoot, you know, pick the location, perfect light. A portrait is a portrait is a portrait. Uh, but then they would teach me the proper positions, um, feet, legs, hands, angles, and then I would do the rest. And so after a collaboration, which honestly, everything I do is a collaboration, um, I kind of felt like I knew what I was doing. And it just grew from there. Now I was looking for a way to reinvent myself. Um, and to rebrand myself, as I said earlier. And I decided, um, so let me just backtrack for a second. I'm from California. And so my business was in California. I moved to Atlanta 16 years ago and never really started a portrait business in Atlanta, more editorial and commercial to pay the bills. And so when I started doing ballet, I 
was really, that's what I became known for here, not for photographing children, which was lovely because I, you know, I'm at that age now where I, getting down on the ground is one thing, but getting back up is another. And my style had always been to run after children um, and to be very spontaneous when I photographed. So uh, that had to stop. And it's just lovely to be able to work with dancers and adults that actually will, you know, stay in place. Well, anyway, for a few moments in time. So it just kind of grew from there. Um, I'd never really, honestly, I never really knew where it would take me. Uh, but it took me to some really wonderful places. And it took me to traveling. Um, I started selling my work without really even trying. Uh, I had posted a lot of the imagery that I was producing on my website, tagged it, key, you know, keynoted everything. And I was found by a designer who worked with um, MGM Studios, uh, MGM Resorts International in uh, Las Vegas. And they liked my work and ended up buying uh, six, nine images from me that were about 10 feet long that they then put into uh, the Park Theater, which has been bought by Amazon, I believe. Um, anyway, there are three floors. It's where they have their uh, concerts. And so my images were the only images in the entire building, which was really quite an honor for me. But it really helped me uh, get some confidence about my abilities um, to produce this kind of work. And so then I started getting some jobs. People asked me if I would teach what I was doing, which, of course, you know, which was part of the branding. So that worked out really well. Um, and then I started selling my imagery. So, yeah, that last image is from ClickCon, yep. <laughs> as is this one. Uh, yeah, I do a steampunk photo walk. It's a ballet steampunk photo walk. Um, and so I just decided to have fun. That, that was really kind of what I wanted to do, what I wanted to teach, and what I wanted to produce in regards to my work. And so the, the more I do this, the more dancers that I work with, the more that people want to work with me, which is also just a really wonderful thing. This image is from Parado, which is another conference which is specific to dance. And so I've met just some really wonderful people, um, which is helping me grow my own business because it's a whole side of the business I didn't really know anything much uh, about, about ambassador programs or or how photographers go into dance studios to photograph young dancers kind of from the ages of three and four on up. And so I have recently just done that. Um, when I was in Chicago at ClickCon after the uh, program, the conference ended, I then went and photographed about 14 dancers in six hours which was a very difficult thing to do. But what we're trying to do in that genre is to introduce to these dance studios more professional, um, more creative, more fine art looking work than this bright, light, white background that they all do uh, and have been doing for years and years. And so we're trying to, and I say we, uh, are trying to change uh, what's been done in the past to what could possibly be done in the future. Um, and also in the hopes of helping these photographers do more uh, creative work, uh, make more money, charge more money for that kind of work and really separate themselves out. Uh, it would be an add-on to what they're currently doing. So uh, I never really anticipated that that this is the direction that I would be going in but I I'm kind of letting it lead me where it goes and with it I am enjoying a, a whole new world a whole new world is opening up to me so what am I saying in all of this I think I want to encourage 
all photographers, all artists to have personal projects, do what you love for yourself and see where it takes you. Um, you know, a good portrait is a good portrait is a good portrait. Good light is good light is good light. You know, it's all about angles and light. So whether you do landscapes, whether you photograph birds, uh, you know, it really doesn't matter what your subject matter is. Mine just happens to be portraits because because that's what I do. But the point is that as artists, which we all are, we need to feed our souls. We, we need to feed that part of us that, that needs to express ourselves or has that need to click the shutter uh, or has the need just to do what you love to do on top of whatever else you do to pay your bills. And so the point of the personal projects really is just that. Um, and see where that takes you. It, it will change you. It, it can't not change you. And I think maybe that's the important thing. Um, as artists, as business people, regardless of what your business is, it's a constant having to reinvent yourself in this business and all businesses. You cannot stay the same you, and, and expect to grow. It just, it's just not how the world works. So it's a constant reinvention. So even though I do ballet, which is different from children and family portraits, I'm constantly trying to up my game. I'm always, always, always learning, taking classes, getting educated. Um, sometimes I feel like my brain is just going to explode. But I love what I do. And I love the people that I work with. And I'm so enjoying meeting these lovely young people that have a passion for what they do as much as I do. So it's a process for me to take all the skills that I have currently um, in the hopes that that will grow too and applying it to this new genre. Um, these images that you see here, these are my dancers who happen to be cross-dressers. And so they asked me if I would do portraits of them. And I'm like, yes, I, I would love to. Let's do it. Let's learn it. Let's be it. Uh, let's, let's do all the things that I've learned, you know, that I've spent my lifetime learning how to do. And so primarily, uh, this is all natural light, by the way. I'm a natural light shooter. I shoot in the studio. I use lighting, uh, studio lighting. I love it. Uh, but I will say the most natural thing that I do is natural light, whether it be outside or inside in a beautiful natural light studio. So I've been blessed to be able to take that skill set and then apply it. Um, I also love now, styling. Now, Judy, were, Judy, were you a um, uh, an art major? Did you? I no. Mean, I'm looking at all no, my, your stuff. You weren't? No. Wow. No, my, my um, degree, I have a... I have a degree in speech communications, so so I can talk, no problem there. Uh, but no, yeah, that watching, just comes the way, naturally. The way you put some of your work together, the artistic side of it is absolutely amazing. Oh, thank you, thank you. I I appreciate that. I you know living with Eddie has made my studio lighting that much better. I will say. Um, I'm very fortunate to live with a man who's uh, a fashion photographer uh, and is teaching me all about studio lighting and how to make it look like natural light. So Eddie's really, um, he's really upped my game. So <laughs> I'm very fortunate there. But no, I yeah, love well, the we're, style. We're all fortunate. Um, ha having you two together, uh, just absolutely amazing. Mm. Eddie, of course. Uh, Eddie was one of my mentors in the very, very beginning, just be actually before he met you. And then when he met you, I'm sure he wouldn't just stop yeah. smiling everywhere he went. Um, <laughs> you know, and then you come along and all of a sudden, like the stuff that you're producing, it's like, wow, absolutely gorgeous. Um, and it's neat because you took on a totally different style than Eddie. And it just, I mean, like this shot right here, look at this, just, just the way you capture just him, just the, the gestures, the emotion. And again, you said all of this is natural light. That's all natural is, light. Yeah. Wow. That's in a cemetery, by the way. 
<laughs> I know, really. But, you know, why not? It had beautiful mausoleums all over the place. It, it's called uh, Oakland. It's in it's oh, in downtown man. Atlanta. It's just a beautiful place to shoot. And so wow. I do this type of stuff just to draw attention to myself. This is actually uh, a prism that I've placed in front of my lens uh, with some gels. So nice. So See, I do. And here, and here I sat here thinking that um, you know I'm sitting here thinking you had smoke bombs, uh, you know several different lighting techniques going on in here. You're saying it was just a prism. Wow. It's just a prism. Yeah. Yeah. It's just in front of my lens. Yeah. It's, there's a holder on it and it's a magnetized so I can let it go and place it where I want it. These, uh, this is a filter that you see. It's a window that I photographed and then I use that as a, uh, I blend it into the image. Um, so yeah, that's another thing that I, I use almost everything that I try to do anyway is about drawing attention to myself. And so my graphics and textures that I use all the time uh, and other images, um, you know, I'm just blending them into my own image. This is a studio setup that you see here um, just to draw attention. Yeah, I'm just, as I try to build a brand, um, you know, you wh whatever it takes, whether I have to post every day, whether it's it's just I use color. Uh, I'm using bright colors these days um, to to draw attention. Wings when I'm using wings like this with with Keith in my studio, again, it's about you know trying to look different, uh, draw attention. Um, Keith is six four, barefoot, wow. and so he's a little bit taller than my my little garage studio can handle. So I had to find ways to make him small, and so this was this was that because um, he looms very large. And then when he gets up on point, which he does barefoot, you know, then he he's even taller. So you have to get creative. Um, same thing, same studio, uh, just textures and graphics and soft light um, to accentuate you know, the position, their beautiful bodies. I mean, I look at these bodies and I'm just in awe of the amount of work that goes into building these bodies to do the things that they do. It's just so amazing. So I have a love of, of them before I even start to photograph. And, and I think that comes through in what I do. Anyone Definitely. feeling fat? Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Boy, yeah. they have muscles <laughs> on top of muscles on top of muscles. Um, this is Emma. All, all these guys that you have just seen are all dancers with the Atlanta Ballet Group. Um, now, again, now you know, you this is- with them? Uh, other, other than your work being absolutely amazing, how did you get in with, uh, one, I know that's your passion, Dancing is your passion, photography-wise. So how did you get in with them? Um, I was introduced to one dancer who worked for the Atlanta Ballet Group. She was 17 at the time, uh, and she needed pictures for a portfolio. So it was just about knowing someone who knew someone. And I had asked her, I said, I'm, I'm thinking about doing dancers. Do you know anybody? And she said, as a matter of fact, I do. One of my clients is a dancer. And I went, do you mind if I photograph her? And that was just a practice. So when I photographed her, I asked her if she had any friends that, that danced with the Atlanta Ballet Group. And she said she had many. So she introduced me to a handful who then introduced me to more. Um, and then, uh, and this is during the time frame when I was sponsored by Sigma. And we had a conference here in Atlanta, and I asked Dave Metz at the time um, if I could bring dancers in and showcase our lenses by photographing dancers, which I thought would draw a big crowd at the convention, which of course they did. And, and so it just grew from there. Wow. See, so I mean, so that's it's a all great about example. Yeah, but that, that's a great example, Judy, of how you're saying your passion. You know, our, our good friend, um, uh, uh, oh my God, she, she had a mental block 
I can't believe this. Joe Glida. All right, so our beautiful, our good friend Joe Glida did the same thing with airplanes, right? He with had, airplanes, has a passion. Yep. And all, now, I'm looking yeah. at you guys who are, quote, supposed to be retired, and all of a sudden, Joe's coming out with all these things. You're coming out with all these dancing. Um, and I sit back and think, God, the pa- you can see the passion. Um, so I think that's, I think what I'm getting from what you're saying is photograph what you're passionate about and then build connections around that and get other people involved. Um, like this shot here, you'll get getting two extremely talented uh, dancers together like this. And then of course, you know, the background, what you added to it, this is extremely unique. Um, and, and so love- this is, this is a perfect example though. I mean, this is one of the, I have to say, honestly, one of my favorite images I've ever created. And this is a collaboration between these two dancers who are very good friends who work together. Um, I had no concept of what we were going to do. And so I asked them if there was a way that they could both come together in a position. And this is what they came up with. So first they have to show me what it is they want to do. And then I have to figure out how to light it. So this is a two light setup. Uh, And and honestly, I, I could not say that I knew that this would happen. But I think that when you bring people together that are passionate and you have that kind of synergy, that's what happens. It, oh, it, it can't not happen. Okay. You know, even, even looking at your natural light, your portraits like this, for example, look catching, yeah. grabbing the catch lights in the eyes. I wish I could zoom in. I think yep. I can. I mean, yeah, look at this. Cat, capturing great catch lights, you know, in the eyes, um, and the depth of field And here. so, you know, there's tricks. Well, tricks. I'll say tricks. There's a lot of tricks that go with this. She's standing. So obviously the sun is behind her and I'm backlighting her. That's by design. But there's cement in front of her that acts as like a natural reflector that then bounces light into her face. And so that's where those catch lights come from. And once you learn to do that, then you start to look for it. So this is actually shot in my backyard. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. Um, Thank you. Yeah, and again, like, like here, is... for example. Yeah, right? I mean, you, you, you have a beautiful portrait, but you added to it with your editing skills, um, roses, beautiful well, roses symbolizing pure love. Um, yeah, but overall, well, and what's the story behind this? Shay, the, Shay is actually moving. And so I'm dragging my shutter with my strobe. Ah. <laughs> Don't ask me why. I mean, these are just the things that I try to do. If you go to Instagram, uh, Vanelli, to the last image that I, I think I posted it yesterday or the day before, I'm doing very long exposures now uh, with my strobes. Yeah, that very last image. And so what I'm trying, what I'm trying to do here is to show movement rather than stop movement. So now I'm building a whole new look of actually showing with a very long exposure and, and a strobe um, the actual movement because she moved from one side to the other. So now I'm doing something I've never done before. It's way well, it fun. You're, you're, <laughs> you're constantly pushing yourself, right? It seems yes. like you're constantly pushing yourself to that next level. Um, oh, here, you're using gobos in between. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, this is Westcott. These yeah. are new Westcott lights. Uh, we just bought it, and I'm having so much fun. So it comes <laughs> with all these cutouts, and then it comes with all these gels. And our unit, and I'm sure that they come with 
uh, it, it has a Canon EF mount on it. So we mm -hmm. can actually take our EF lenses and put it onto that gobo and make oh, wow. that circle, you know, fill the whole room if you want to. Wow. In wow. this case, uh, we just wanted a small circle and we wanted to show the cutout to be sharp. But, it, you know, the cutouts don't have to be on the individual. They can just be behind them. I, I mean, I, seriously, um, I, I could go 24 seven and, and not breathe. I, it, it, there's just too much to do. <laughs> well, and you, oh, you the proved gels. that at, at ClickCon. You proved that at ClickCon <laughs> when, right? I mean, think about Click, ClickCon was like a 24 hour, what was it, five day event to where, like, hey, where's Judy? I'm trying to find you. The only time I found you was at the last night's dinner and you sat for a few minutes. Um, and every time I, I said, know. where's I'm Judy? I'm always shooting. Yeah, yeah, they said she's out. She's out in Chicago somewhere shooting. Um, it was well, and amazing. this image, the image you see right here uh, with uh, Alyssa, this was done in Chicago. This was done Monday before it started. And this is at the Hampton Inn, which is right down the street from where we were staying at the Palmer House. Wow. And I think wow. we had, we snuck in there. We had like maybe 10, 15 <laughs> minutes. And we had to be very quiet because obviously we weren't staying there and we didn't want to get kicked out. So we found this staircase. And so, you know, 10 minutes later, I had the image and we left. Oh, so, so for everyone here watching, notice a lot of my friends start, start the story with, we had to sneak in. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I am amazed that, that none of us got arrested so far. Um, oh man, my gosh! Look at this shot. I know. A absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, and this is one of my dancers. So I don't always photo oh. because I'm a portrait photographer. I don't always photograph them dancing, but I, in this case, Madison's a jumper, and when you have a dancer that likes to jump, you have to let them fly. And so this is one of the things that I have learned. Alyssa, who was in the red, is not a jumper. So I, I, I don't have that opportunity with her. But gotcha. Madison is a is a jumper. Well, uh, yeah, I so this is this image with the textures, the, the, the red yeah. dress. Um, again, that's why I asked you if you were an art major, because I'm noticing like Carly, yourself, um, Sherry Hagerman, they, they have this incredible eye with art and you're just putting yes. it all together. And I learn okay. as I go too, because I work with stylists. So again, you know, that's something I love and something I learn each time. And then I'm a portrait photographer at heart. So when I have a dancer that looks at me like that, I mean, how can I not take that image? <laughs> so yeah. I, I think I have the best of all worlds when it comes to that. It's a lot of a lot of fun, yes. and then they do these yeah. things. Oh wow! Lo I love the emotion. so. I have a lot of dancers that are not ballet dancers, and so Morgan is is one of those very what I call physical dancer, <clears throat> and she flies, but she doesn't do point, gotcha. which is why you see her barefoot. So, so again, and then, what's great for what's great for people to recognize is that you you talk about your passion again. You never danced. You have no desire to become a ballet dancer, but yet you have an incredible eye of what you're seeing with the dancing, the timing, um, and and like you said, I think all of that boils down to you collaborating with them, asking the right questions, and then letting them do their thing. Um, like this, this one here is another just absolutely gorgeous shot. Just did this one. And oh, interesting, Vanelli, this dancer, uh, Becca, was uh, introduced to me by Sherry and Jeremy last year at ClickCon. She was 13. Oh, yes. And she dances with the Bolshoi Ballet. Yes. And she's, she's amazing. So she came to Atlanta 
uh, to take a summer uh, class with the Atlanta Ballet Group. And then right before she left, we had scheduled a session here with me. Um, and so that's, I just created this maybe a couple weeks ago. Her dad wanted me to do an image of the wings with her feet. Uh, and we weren't quite sure what we were going to do. So I did several different setups. And this is the one that we all fell in love with. And it would, I have to tell you, honestly, it wouldn't have the impact that it does without all of the graphics and textures um, mm -hmm. that I have put on it. Because shot just in the studio with the natural colors, it didn't quite have that magic that I wanted it to have. Gotcha. Well, that's great. Well, you so when you see your passion, you definitely see your passion <laughs> shining through. Well, you know, it, it's uh, like I did a lot of sports, you know, that my, my sport portraits was because my son is a single father. He loved sports. Well, what better way to bond with him than be at all of his lacrosse games, do photo shoots over the weekend. So, you know, I was trying to get away from the sports side of it so I wouldn't be typecast. But again, when you have a single teenage kid, we have, when you're single and you have a teenage kid, you follow that passion. And it looks like you did that with um, with, with the dance. Which, now, you also have grandchildren. So when they get older, I, are you putting them in dance yet? <laughs> you know, my, my oldest of the two is four. She's already in dance. She nice. loves to perform. So I have a little baby, I have my little tiny dancer, um, <laughs> which, yeah, which is just way fun. I, I wanted to say pretty much to everybody out there, um, we use the word passion a lot. And I will say to you, like with Joe Glida and airplanes, and, you know, for my husband, too, who became a, we called him a droneographer because he mm -hmm. wanted to learn how to fly. And so he learned drones. Now he's doing underwater. The true passion is about photography. Um, that's where it starts. I, I love to shoot. Uh, I love to shoot, period. I just love to shoot. Um, loving to photograph dancers, um, I, I would say comes next. When I first learned photography, I was in the dark room constantly trying to do creative things. So when Photoshop came out and then we became digital photographers, um, I, I think I found my true calling because I'm a Photoshop junkie. And as much as I love to shoot and as much as I love people and I love creating, um, I also love my quiet time in front of my monitor, taking what I've done and just taking it to another level. So a true passion, something that you truly makes you feel good. And for me, helps for me to make others feel good. Um, it's like the best thing ever. I don't know how else to describe it, but yeah, it's, it's kind of here. like, you know, this I'm is Becca, this, here, this is Judy. the 13 year old. Well, yeah, I, I just, just imagine her years from now, we're, we're talking, let's say yeah. 20 years from now, here she is 33, going back, showing people these photos, you know, mm -hmm. um, or when she has children, they're going to look back and go, oh my God, right. I mean, that's you. I mean, to me, that's just, yes. it stands the test of time. It, it does. Uh, at least I hope it does. Uh, I can't imagine that it wouldn't. Um, this was the very first session that I did with her last year. And so when people ask me back, I am so honored. It, it's just such a great feeling. So I, I don't know how else to describe it. My, my world is about feeling good. It's about making people happy and myself. Awesome. So now I just realized that that was at ClickCon, right? Yep. The Palmer House. Um. It was. <laughs> and I, I had to beg Sherry for, I think I had 15 minutes in that room before the next class started. That's the room they did all the boudoir. There's a bed in there. Yep. Um, I wanted the window light. 
And I had been shooting upstairs in the suite. That's where we started. And then we came downstairs. And, and then I just, you know, walked her around the building and photographed her some more. But she begged me in the beginning to photograph her because, you know, she's 13. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, well, you were, you were so, definitely one of the, you were, you were the most sought after photographers there. Um, and that's why, like we said, we, we couldn't get a hold of you um, because you're always <laughs> Out to all hours I'm of the night, busy. shooting, shooting. This is another one of your well, I, had, I really love. I had hoped to introduce, um, you know, kind of a new genre to everybody at ClickCon. Yep. Um, and I think that's what I accomplished. And, and now there are others doing it, which is wonderful. Uh, because there's a whole new world in the portrait world, so to speak. And there's so many things that we could be doing that are new and, and that we can introduce into this world with the skill set that you know comes out of these conferences. So I, I'm loving the fact that there's a lot of other instructors doing ballet and like Carly taking it to a whole nother level. I mean, the work that she did and showed me, I, it's like I'm signing up for her class next year. <laughs> oh, well, let's do this. Let, let's open it up for discussion. So okay. um, if you have, if you have questions, please do me a favor and unmute your mic. I already see hands are up. So, you know what? <laughs> I'll do this. I'll let Simon go first. All right, here we go. All right, Simon, fire away. Okay. So, uh, an amazing portfolio of work, Judy. Thank you. Absolutely stunning. Um, I have a question about the, um, the, the ballerina that you took in motion. So my first question is, when you when you actually shot this using a strobe, um, you, you know, in terms of settings, were you using sort of, um, oh, what is it, rear curtain or front curtain, you know, on the shutter? It's called, it's called rear curtain, and no, I was not. Okay. We're still wow. trying to figure out how to do that with these new mirrorless cameras. Okay, okay. So... When you shot it, did you actually shoot that particular image handheld and sort of follow the ballerina, or did you have it on a tripod and you just opened up the shutter for about that looks like about a four second exposure to me and get it to move uh, across? It was a yeah, it was a little under, so I did it both ways. Um, uh, it's handheld the first time that I tried, and no, you don't move. So you start with the strobe. Awesome. And then she moves uh, while your while your shutter is open, and I hand held it the first couple of times, and then I did do the tripod just because I wanted it to be really that first image. I wanted it to be tack sharp. Yep, yep. I have a pretty steady hand, but the tripod is definitely helpful. And what I will say is, I had uh, she was lit on that first side, um, I would add, have added, the next time I do this, add a second light yeah, so that the light that's... doesn't change. Yeah, no, that's a beautiful, I mean, I think you've done, uh, I think you've done an amazing job with that. I think that's, uh, I think that's absolutely awesome. Thank you very, very much, Judy. That's, that's me done. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. All right. And next we'll go with, one moment, let me get Dale up here. All right, and Dale? Yeah, my question is, uh, uh, one of the challenges I see is for a lot of portrait or a lot of uh, fine art is this vision beforehand. And sort of in, uh, you have such a diversity of work, I have to say, I mean, it's uh, <laughs> it's amazing to me in terms of, of the skill sets and thought processes, but I always get back to the concept where here you are with dancers, how much of that do you sort of pre-envision of what you're going to do or how much of that actually gets led by specifically like the dancers uh, understanding. It sounds like you've sort of uh, evolved in that process as you've understood more, but how much do they lead and how much do you lead is kind of my thought process. Um, I pre-visualize absolutely uh, big time, whether I'm inside or outside uh, because I style the shoot I have to figure out what it is I'm trying to accomplish, so to speak, or what the story is that I want to tell. 
Um, but so much of what I do is really the energy that then comes from the dancer. So I might have an idea of where I want to go with this. And then I meet the dancer and realize it, it, it won't work. Uh, so I have to be flexible and change my, my, my visual uh, intent. Um, so I would say it's 50-50. Um, you know, everything changes when you meet your dancer. So my last session this last weekend, I'm working with a dancer for the very first time. I met her through a friend. I hadn't even met her face to face. I knew what she looked like, so to speak, but I had no idea what her capabilities were. And so as I started to work with her and realized what they were and who she was, um, it, it changed completely. <laughs> Uh, I just, you know, she's like game for anything. And I have to kind of tweak, so to speak, um, what what I thought I was going to do and ended up doing. I, I mean, I didn't know I was going to try to capture motion. So you envisioned what you were going to do and then essentially uh, with the content Changed in front of you, uh, moved to where it needed to go. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I, I have to be flexible. You know, when I, I, let me just add to that. When you photograph children for a living, you have to be flexible. <laughs> and you have to be fast. And so those are the two things that I've learned and that I've brought over to my dancers. Yes. Awesome. All right. Uh, let's go with Don and then Carlos. Hey, Judy, splendid work. Um, like Benelli said, you really can see the passion that you put into what it is that you do. Uh, one of your specific shots that you were talking about that was in, I think you said Hampton Inn, I can't remember, but the spiral, yeah. stair the spiral staircase. Um, what was the yeah. impetus or the inspiration for, you already had a dynamic situation with the red dress and a beautiful model and the staircase. What was the inspiration for draping her dress? Was it to pull your eye down to the, to the spiral and the staircase to, to drape her dress over with such a dynamic pose, posing uh, aspect to that photo that not only is the model there and, and, the, and the architecture that are drawing your eye, but then what was it that made you do that at that point? <laughs> so I would love to say that that was preordained <laughs> but it wasn't. Um, I took those 10 or 15 minutes that I had. We saw this, the, the staircase and we went, yes, we have to shoot that. And yeah. every time I had seen a staircase like that with a dancer, she was always down on the floor with the photographer photographing down. And I don't like to do what has been done. So I decided I needed my dancer on the railing as opposed to in that little section. And so we tried it a lot of different ways. Um, it was a, I had a wide angle lens. Um, I think I was, I think it was either four, I think I was at 14. Um, and I, I was trying to figure out what would be the best angle, how much of the staircase I could get in um, how was I going to create an image where you would know she was a dancer? Um, and I couldn't. Uh, you could not really see her feet and the dress and the contrast. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to make a, a, an educated guess that it didn't matter that you couldn't tell she was a dancer. I wanted her to be there, but I wanted there to be a reason that she was there. Um, and so those are the things that go through my mind. So above all else, I'm a storyteller. And so as I'm looking at all of this, and this is like, I feel like a computer sometimes. It's like all this information goes in and then it all comes out. Um, I wow. wanted to tell a story. So, so that was the priority. So it was more about this beautiful young woman who was very um, thought provoking looking, just kind of looking, looking down, looking out um, in thought, you know, that was kind of where I was taking it. 
there's like a fluidity to it as the dress goes over the side. It really is a very nice piece of art. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate You're welcome. It. Awesome. You're very All welcome. Right, let's go with little well, Carlos. Hi there. Uh, Judy, how are you? Um, Good. Uh, thank you. Um, no, uh, your work is exceptional. Honestly, thank I signed you. up for your uh, link tree also, by the way. Oh, uh, yay. <laughs> I, I've been trying to get more into the professional uh, line of work and um, I retired last year. So I, I had been doing some photography on weekends, weddings and things like that. But uh, I have a particular question um, with your, uh, and this might be a sensitive kind of thing, but your signature. Do you use your signature on all of your pictures? And what is your main reason for that? Um, yeah, I try to is the, is the true answer to the question. Sometimes I forget I'm in such a hurry to get them out there. Um, I, I really just want people to know that it's mine. Um, so that's the honest answer. Um, sometimes like with these images here, this was done for, um, an ambassador program. And I, I am also always trying to get business while I'm doing this. So right. I want to make sure that the people that didn't participate in that particular program, know who I am. And so that, you know, it's another way to brand. So yes, I, anything I post, I try to remember to get my signature on your work. So yeah, definitely. Also on, on the shot that you did on the, um, uh, dragging the, the, the trigger, um, I'm trying to trying to learn that, and 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 I think it's beautiful with the one you did, and I've been seeing a lot of those, uh, and it's interesting. I like to grow, like you were saying, and 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 uh, do more advanced stuff. But uh, I was just wondering if you used, um, and you mentioned that you did use tripod and also handheld. Did you on the flash? Did you use on camera flash? No, this is a strobe. These are pro photo strobes. So it's a it's a B one that's on a stand. So I I'm it's not on camera. Can you okay. do it on camera? I don't know. I haven't tried. Um, I would imagine it's dragging the shutter. So yeah. you could probably do it that way too. I've seen it. Yeah. The one thing that um, uh, I picked up on some of these flashes, you can use the multi uh, function mm -hmm. of the flash so that you can get multiple movements. Right. And kind of that's what it looks like you've got there, like the flash shot more than one time. No, so, the flash did it. it the, the strobe only went off once. Oh, okay. And so it's just a, a long, long exposure and she stops at the end. And so the question when you do this, and again, this is all new to me, um, is how fast she moves and or how slowly she moves and you do not move that's the one right. that's the one that's thing hard. that i've learned so far i can't move which is why i eventually went to the tripod and, and how, so how, how, how many you know, shots did it take you to get that, that special shot <laughs> you know i looked at i looked at that before i uh before i posted it and i think i shot 12 or 13 of these images uh -huh. uh, before I, and I have several that I liked. Um, but this one kind of stood out. So I just decided to go with that one. Um, Vanelli, before we go to or get to the end, um, I have a couple of workshops. Is this a good time to mention that or not? Right here. Right here. Can you see this? Do you I want me to mention them now? Perfect time. Not perfect. Time. Oh, okay. So um, I, I've been asked a lot to teach what I do and how I do it and how it works and how to make money from it and what are all the different worlds of ballet that you can become involved in. And so 
I have two workshops coming up. Um, this one is in October, and this is in Arizona. Oh. And it's three pretty intense days of doing just what you've seen, is working with professional photographers. We have working with male and female photographer uh, dancers, ballet dancers, and then we have a couple of young dancers as well. Um, also taking, you know, pretty much a full day and teaching textures and, you know, blending images together. So we take it from the beginning to the end and then have conversations about all of the different ballet, so to speak, businesses um, that you can become involved in and how that all works. And that's with my friend, Michelle Celentano, who is a Canon Explorer of Light, who took my class here in Atlanta, loved it so much, and then she invited me into her studio. So we're gonna do a lot of different things. We're gonna do body painting with our dancers, we're trying to get some horses to go out into uh, nice. some of the canyons and and change you know change the whole scenery um, that we have access to in Phoenix out by where she lives. Uh, we've got different bays that we're setting up with different lighting uh, uh, sessions, so to speak, and, and it's a small class. We're trying to keep it very small so that we can really personally work with everybody to make sure that we meet whatever their goals are as well. So that's the big one. Uh, after that, on the 22nd of October, I have a smaller workshop uh, that's here in Atlanta that I'm doing. It's a really, a, a, it's three hours, uh, it's two professional dancers. Um, and I'll post that one for you. I haven't, uh, trying to remember, it's Roswell, Society, um, I can't remember the name of their website, but Vanelli, I'll, I'll send you the link um, if you could oh, post perfect. that for me. Um, so that's just a three hour one. And, and I don't know if you all know who Roman is, um, but we're, I, I'm doing, we're doing two. We have a gentleman coming in that's doing macro and then myself to do dancers. And we're doing this all in one day. So it's a kind oh, of a different, go from one extreme to the other. <laughs> awesome. Now, you, you have Roman coming in? Yeah, Roman's going to come to Atlanta and teach a class in, uh, in macro. Yep, yep. We, we had Roman on a couple times. Oh, cool. Yeah, then yep. you know Roman. Yep. Um, but awesome job, Judy. Judy. Yeah. What was that? No, I was just going to say, I'm going to be in Atlanta for a... Uh, wedding on the 8th but you're not going to be doing any of that i see that it's no no i'll be i'll be in arizona and then this is not till the 22nd okay i, I think okay. it was hinting towards a uh, a private one but um yeah ah. that, that could happen <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> and i would love to do that and they do do that but i'll be in phoenix yeah, yeah I see. Well, no problem Judy, we'll thank, thank you so much for your time um and once again i i, I knew you'd be a hit um we, we, we had just the inspiration oh, thank you and the, the overall quality of your work so thank you so much um for everyone else please just stick around for a real quick ask me anything segment you can say goodbye to Judy thank you holly this yep and for the rest of us we'll see you at the next coffee break